Hello students, I hope you are fine and we are again here to talk environmental microbiology and public health and environmental biotechnology. Especially here we have to talk health effects of the air pollution. Uh, you can see over here. And it is continuation of our previous lecture where we have talked various case concentration of various cases on air which negatively affects the human health who are uh, taking breath over there. So air pollutant criteria, here we have to talk today about the nitrogen oxides, nitrogenous gases. Nitrogenous gases also released from environment and coming part of the atmosphere and air. And the concentration of the nitrogen gases whenever exceeds in environment, it negatively affects the human health. So if you will see what are the causes of the nitrogen gases in the environment, if you will see here, fuel combustion at high temperature, this is the main cause of the release of nitrogen gases uh, from uh, different substances to environment. And if you will see the source, this is the mobile and stationary combustion, stationary combustion sources automobiles and stationary combustion sources. Different nitrogenous sources are, are organic molecules, are organic materials which are burned on earth on globe. That is responsible to release the nitrogenous gases to the environment. Okay, what happens when the concentration of nitrogen gases in the environment is higher and lives in that environment for a longer time, what happens is the individuals who are taking breaths, who are living over there, who are continuously exposed to that environment and prolonged exposure to nitrogen gases, it will affect pulmonary fibrosis. It will affect our respiratory system, emphysema, and the higher lower respiratory tract illness in children. So now concentration of nitrogenous gases in the environment, if the concentration exceeds from normal concentration to above its level, these are negatively affecting the uh, respiratory system of individuals who are living over there and especially in children, where it's causing a lower respiratory tract illness in children. And NACAS makes a, a standard about the concentration of nitrogen gases in environment, national standard of uh, ambient uh, quality standard, air quality industry, national ambient air quality standards. It says that annual average 0 0.053 ppm as nitrogen dioxide nitrous oxide is acceptable, NO2 is acceptable. When concentration of NO2 exceeds from this concentration, this will affect the human health uh, negatively, especially in children and uh, elders. Again, it is continuation of the nitrogen oxide concentrations in here. Here. So we can see over here that when the concentration of the nitrogenous gases is higher in the environment, it is toxic effect is at 10 to 30 ppm of nitrogen oxide. When the concentration of nitrogen oxide is in range of 10 to 30 ppm, it has toxic effects on those people who are living over there. So we have to be careful about this whenever we are living in an environment. We have to see that what is the concentration of the nitrogen oxide in that environment. If the nitrogen oxide concentration is very higher in atmosphere where we are living, so it can affect the human health negatively. So what will happen initially if the concentration of nitrogen oxide is 10 to 30, 
nose and eye irritation will take place. The people who are living as there, the nose and eye irritation will start. The individuals who are living at high concentration of the nitrogen gases. So, gradually, what will happen? Lung tissues will damage. What will be the other toxic effect? Pulmonary edema, swelling will take place in pulmonary system. Bronchitis will take place. Bronchi swelling in bronchi will take place due to high concentration of the nitrogen in air when it is concentration between 10 to 30 ppm. Defense mechanism of human because nature developed and made a a strong and complete defensive system in a human body due to higher concentration of nitrogen oxide in an atmosphere when it will be inhaled by the individual as the defense system of that particular one will be damaged and it will show the sign and symptoms of pneumonia it looks that uh, the person is suffering from pneumonia. Aggravate existing heart disease and it will cause heart problems out. So, here in this slide, just we want to say this thing that if get concentration of nitrogen gases in environment will increase, it will cause these health effects in environment, in individuals who are living over there. Again, it is continuation of the concentration of the nitrogen oxides in the environment intensified in presence of the particulate matter. London killer smoke health effect was combination of the two air pollutants, sulfur dioxide and aeros aerosol particles, which have taken the various lives from London. So, this is another point. We are going to talk about the uh, criteria air pollutant about lead. Lead is also a toxic element present in our environment. If concentration of lead increases in the environment, it also negatively affects the human health. So firstly, we will see what is the source of the lead into the environment because we are considering it is a uh, element. It should live in, on surface of the earth inside of the earth but it comes into the air how it comes burning fuels that contain lead it phased out it is going when we are burning fuels the lead is going to the environment metal processing waste incinerator the places where we are, we are processing the metals those are also a source of the emission of lead from surface to environment. And waste incinerators, the places where we are burning waste, if that contain lead material, that is going into the environment. Lead smelters and lead paint, which we are using in home, uh, gradually it uh, releases lead to the environment. What happens if these all things are responsible to release lead into the environment, into the air? What happens? It absorbs in blood, similar to the calcium. When someone is inhaling lead particles with air, with oxygen, it is going into the lungs, and the lungs are uh, the alveolar sites are only places where transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place at the same time uh, the lead is going to be absorbed into the blood just like calcium national ambient air quality standards are saying that 1.5 milligram per meter cube lead quarterly average it is acceptable and for three months if the concentration of lead 1.5 milligram per meter cube is acceptable. If concentration exceeds from here, it becomes a dangerous zone. If concentration is less from this, that is more suitable and more good. 
you can see this is a device uh, this is car which is releasing uh, a smoke from its engine by burning up fuel it contains lead particles and these are inhaled by the individuals who are uh, in uh, who are taking breath in such environment lead smelters emission cause children in region to have lower iq and the brain affected the places where people are living uh, at that environment if concentration of lead is comparatively higher the newborns they have low uh, lower iq and they have brain effect epa engineers in charge of the clean up at this site so here in this point just we want to say that the place if the concentration of lead is present is higher in environment if uh, the newborn of that place they have lower iq and uh, their their men uh, their brain is not developing properly it is in continue continuation of the lead pollutant in atmosphere and air accumulates in blood bones muscles and fat it absorbs it just like calcium and it accumulates in blood in bone in muscle in fat consequently what it does damage organs kidneys liver brain reproductive system bones and in bones is it cause osteoporosis so these are the negative effects of the lead so we should be careful that lead concentration should not go lead not should go into the atmosphere the people who are living at that at such environment where concentration of lead is higher they have to face certain problems with their health brain and nervous system seizures mental retardation behavioral disorders memory problem mood change so we can see in our surroundings and the people who are living in big cities they have such they have uh, such problems people who are uh, uh, born in with mental retardation behavior disorder memory problems mood change the people who are living in higher concentration of lead they must have to face such type of health problem so lead particles in air are very dangerous and have negative impacts on human health whenever we are in installing any uh, unit uh, or vehicle uh, they are producing uh, lead molecules into the atmosphere those are very dangerous for mankind Like when the concentration of lead is higher in atmosphere, in atmosphere or in air, young children, young children, they have lower IQ, learning disabilities. They are unable to learn easily. Heart and blood problems. It causes and it leads high blood pressure, and increases heart disease. And chronic. poisoning is also possible due to the lead concentration into the air so here we have to talk again air quality index so how we will check the concentration of uh, which type of gas is higher in environment uh, up to which level we have to sustain or we have to uh, that is acceptable for human so uh, nakas national air ambient air quality standard that they have done this job if the concentration of certain gases is with this limit that is acceptable if concentration exceeds from that concentration that is considered air quality is not good air quality is bad environmental protection agency and air quality index is for 
reporting daily air quality. They are checking daily air, air quality every day in their cities where people are living at high density level. The air quality index focuses on short term health effects one to 48 hours after exposure. Air quality index is checking this thing. Air quality is calculated from concentration of. We have to be careful over here. Air quality index is calculated from concentrations of sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, ozone, and particles in here. These three are important gases which are used to check the air quality standard. If the concentration of these three gases is within limitation, we are considering that air quality is good. If the concentration of these three gases is exceeds in such environment, uh, we are saying that, and that environment is considered not healthy and bad for human health. Air quality index values in the 0 to 15 indicates good air quality. If the concentration of these three gases is within 0 to 15, air quality index, okay, air quality is good. Air quality index in the 51 to 100 range indicate moderate air quality and exposure will cause short-term health effects to some sensitive people. When the concentration of these three mentioned gases increases in environment from 50 to 100, from 50, between from 51 to 100, we are saying the air quality is moderate. The continuous exposure with such air quality, it can affect on some sensitive people. And un unhealthy effect is for long-term exposure for most people. If in such air quality, where quality air, uh, air quality index is from 51 to 100, and the people are living in such year for longer time, for longer time, so they have long-term health effects over there. So air quality index, if you will see, plate opinion is that moderate air quality is not very healthy. People are saying that Moderate air quality is not very healthy. Okay. The sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide, particulate matter, and ozone, according to cost standards, are set at levels with brown damaging health effects with little or no margin of safety. The carbon monoxide NACAS standard has a margin of safety. So, this is air quality. If you will see here, air quality index criteria, air pollutants, air quality index is the highest magnitude of particulate matter, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, and ozone individually index values okay air quality index video if it is from 0 to 50 air quality is good so what we what will be the scenario of the atmosphere during this particulate matters will be 0 to 15 milligram per meter cube for 24 hours we are saying that air quality is good If particulate matter is 0 0.2, 0 0.034, 0 
of sulfur dioxide gas for 24 hours. Okay, air quality is, is still good. If carbon monoxide for 8 hours, it is concentration is in average 0 to 4 ppm, air quality is good. If ozone concentration for 8 hours is 0 to 0, 0, 0 6, so air quality is if air quality value, air quality index is between 51 to 100, it is considered moderate. So what happens, the particulate matter will be 15 to 40 milligram per meter cube. And the sulfur dioxide concentration will be 0 0.035 to 0 0.14 for 24 hours and carbon monoxide concentration for 8 hours will be between this. Ozone concentration for 8 hours will be this. And if the air quality uh, index is 101 to 150, it is unhealthy to sensitive people. So what will be particulate concentration will be this. Sulfur dioxide concentration for 24 hours will be this. Carbon monoxide concentration for 8 hours will be this. And ozone concentration for 8 hours will be this. It, if air quality index from 151 to 200, it is completely unhealthy. So that air is not good for human health. What will be the scenario? Particulate concentration will be 65 to 150 milligram per meter cube. And the sulfur dioxide concentration will be between this. Carbon monoxide concentration will be between this. And ozone concentration will be between this. It is very unhealthy when the when air quality index is from 201 to 300. Very unhealthy. Oh, it's difficult. 150 milligram per meter cube particles to 250 milligram per meter cube. And other three indicator concentration of other three indicator concentration is this. So Nakasi standards, they are saying that 35 microgram per meter cube is okay, acceptable. Sulfur dioxide concentration should be 0.14 ppm for 24 hours. Carbon monoxide, carbon ppm for 8 hours, okay, acceptable. And ozone concentration 0 0.08 ppm for 8 hours, it is acceptable. So, we can see the what will be the air quality index and what will be the concentration of different gases and the particles on air. From here, we can uh, check our air quality. If it is with this range, it is okay. If it is with this range, it is okay. If it is from this to this, it is very dangerous for the people who are living over here. So this is the formula. Equation for calculating an air pollution index value, we can calculate air quality by this equation. Calculate the air quality index of air that contains 0, 077 ozone for 8 hours, 8.4 ppm carbon monoxide for 8 hours, and 54 microgram per meter cube. This particulate matter is this, so we can calculate uh, the concentration of the index calculated for the air pollutant PM2.5 is highest magnitude, so the air quality index is 1 to 8. We can calculate it like this. So you will do practice from this equation by changing these values and 
if we can measure the concentration of these gases of our air so also we can uh, calculate the index of our air quality if our air uh, air quality is good okay we should be a little bit happy if our air quality is not good we should be a little bit worried and we should think about this Up to here, uh, uh, we are stopping for today and our next session, uh, we will start our next class. Uh, have a nice time, take care and read it carefully from a, a good book, please. Thank you very much.